Welcome back to the lab, everyone. Today, I'm going to be going over some uh, very interesting stuff, something I kind of hold dear to myself. It's, it's part of virtualization, and if you notice, I, I do a lot of virtualization tutorials, and I'm, I'm a big fan of virtualization. I think it has a, a lot to prove for itself, and I think it's only been getting better and better ever since it came out. So today, what I'm going to be going over is VDI. And you may be asking, what is VDI? More acronyms? Fantastic. Great. Got to learn more. VDI stands for Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. And I'm actually going to be starting a series over it. So today, I'm going to be kind of going into uh, what is VDI, how it started, and uh, what can it do for you. So stick around. All right, so to get started today, I want to start off by first, you know, I want to go over the different types of VDI that there are. Now, there's plenty of types of vir virtual desktop infrastructure. There's types where we can actually go in and set up, you know, remote desktop session hosts, such as RDS hosts, and we can make those sessions based, which I know a lot of you are probably familiar with that. With Windows, you just go set up an RDS server, you get some RDS cows, you put them on there, your users log in. Now, that actually is a type of virtual desktop infrastructure because you are having a machine go in and virtually host sessions for those users. Now there's another type of virtual desktop infrastructure where you're actually deploying virtual machines to each end user and that's actually called VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure, where you're actually truly giving everybody their own end system. So what that means is, and Hyper-V has their own way, there's, you know, Citrix has their own way, and VMware has their way. The main one I'm going to be going over in this series is VMware. Now, please keep in mind there are times I will bring up the other ones and how they relate, but from the main part, I'm going to be going over Horizon View, and it's going to be Horizon View 7. Right now in my lab, I'm going to be setting up in this series Horizon View 7.5 at this time because it does have support for Windows 10 17.09, which before, with the early versions of Horizon View, it was a lot of issues, so I actually kept several of my clients on Windows 7, and I'm actually now trying Windows 10 in the lab and making sure everything works before we take those clients up and get them to Windows 10. I do have a few running Windows 10. They're in some 3D environments and some other environments, which is interesting. It does work, but like I said, it was a pain before 7.5, and I'm fully testing it here. But going back to the point of what I was trying to make, I want to go over and tell you guys about virtual desktop infrastructure and what its capabilities are. So virtual desktop infrastructure has been around basically as long as virtualization. What it is, is we actually spin up a virtual machine, as I was talking before, an individual guest for each end user. Now, Horizon View makes this very easy. You can actually go into Horizon View, and they have these things called golden images. These golden images are a master VM, you could say. And what it is, is you go and create one guest operating system. You go in and you make that VM, you install the op all the uh, applications, you get the operating system license, you get everything set up the way you want it to be. From there, you can then go into your VDI, or actually, sorry, it'll be your connection server, which I'll go over that here in a little bit, but you'll log into your VDI instance, and you'll actually be able to use that golden image to actually then go ahead and create what they call clones or linked clones, and you can actually then clone that into however many machines you need for your end users. So if you've got, you know, 100 end users that are needing access, it'll actually, just as down here, so I have three actually in my IBM customer to show you guys. These V-Ray setups, this is actually a pool that was a testing pool. My uh, VDI hosts are offline right now. They're kind of power hungry. At, you know, they've got dual 1400 watt power supplies, so they're kind of, I, I only try to use them when I have to. <laughs> Home lab life. But what I'm trying to make the point is, is that it actually will take a master image and go ahead and use that master image to spin up however many VMs you need to and place it in a pool. You can then actually give access using security groups to that pool, which allows users access into these VMs. When a user connects with the Horizon View client, which let me see actually if I can bring that up here. So we have the Horizon View client here. That Horizon View client, I'm not going to bring it up because it actually will open up some, some private information, but that Horizon View client is what end users will end up using. Let me see if I can actually bring it up here real quick. Is what they'll end up using to connect into your VDI instance. And so if we go here, here's the Rise and View clients you can download. And what that allows you to do is it allows users to then connect in and when they remote in and they have access or entitlements as it's called in VDI, it will allow users to access a given guest operating system. Meaning that once they remote in, they'll be given a VM and it'll be solely dedicated to them. Now those VMs can range from a tons of different power. We have medical clients that use them where we just dedicate eight gigs of RAM and a quad core, no video card, and it runs fine. We can have two or three monitors and each system actually uses here. Let me show you guys. These wise thin clients, they're, they're pretty cool. Some of you guys may know about them. HP also makes some too. 
So these thin clients here, actually these thin and zero clients, they actually come natively built with Horizon. Uh, the client actually comes natively built in as an application, especially if you get the Linux ones. It's really awesome. You just can come in, set it up to where it'll have everything pre-built in. So all the user has to do is just type in username and password. Horizon View, you can actually set it up to where it'll automatically connect to your connection server. So all the user's doing, username, password, boom, they're logging in. If they're entitled to just to a single pool, it'll throw them right into that pool. So the user doesn't have to do anything other than sit down, log in, and then they're getting right to work. Now, there's a bunch of other things I'm gonna get into with how you know you can personalize and set up a user profile with VDI, but that's gonna be later on in the series, guys. It's, it kind of gets crazy. That's when you get into persona management and some you know, um, user, in, uh, what is it? Uh, user environment management by VMware. But like I said, later video. Going back to what I was saying, we have these wise clients. HP also makes some thin clients that we use a lot of the times for, uh, let me see here, let me see if I make sure I can find the right ones. We use these a lot of the times for uh, 3D environments. These bigger guys right here, we actually end up using a lot of those for 3D environments. We, we've used all these before, but these bigger guys can actually handle quad 4K out, uh, yeah, quad 4K display output, meaning that we can actually have end users that are doing 3D applications. I, mean, I don't know if any of you guys have seen my posts on Reddit. I, I work with a lot of the uh, high-end graphics cards. I worked with a 7150 last week. I was going to try to do some videos on it, never got around to it. Sorry about that, but maybe in the future sometime. But we actually have users that have four or eight gigs of RAM dedicated off of that card to a virtual VM. So we actually go in, build them a VM with 16 gigs of RAM, a quad core, and then we go and that Fire Pro is an MX GPU, meaning that it can actually be shared to other devices, it, among other devices. It has 16 gigs of VRAM itself, but we can actually break it down up into two gig sectors, four gigs or eight gigs. I guess the best way to explain it is think of it kind of like a hard drive and when you partition a you know, one terabyte hard drive, we can kind of do the same thing with these Fire Pros and the uh, M60s from NVIDIA. We actually can partition and say how much uh, VRAM each end user will get and that vram then is put in as a 3d accelerator which allows them to run like rev and sketch up and you know you can go in and do video editing and that allows users to do video editing and such kind of in the cloud per se but then it allows them just to have this little itty itsy bitsy thin client you know 400 to 800 dollar thin client put in all their monitors done and let them connect into a nice robust system that's got redundancy built in and everything else that's up in a cluster it's fantastic. Now, you're probably thinking that sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a lot of things. Now, VDI is not, a, is not cheap. I'm going to put that out there right now. VDI is not a good option if you're only running a few users. VDI is a great option if you're needing to have a bunch of high-end 3D users or a bunch of just end users. Medical clients make use of this big time because you know they have nurses, doctors, uh, receptionists, people moving around everywhere like crazy between locations. So they can go ahead and spin up two to 500 VMs on their virtual desktop infrastructure, and from there, they just have users go wherever they need to. The user goes in, signs in, boom, they're in, they're right back on the same desktop they were at one location as they are at another. Makes sense. You know, that's when you really want to start thinking about it. I wouldn't really think about it if you got less than like 50 people. I mean, I believe VMware doesn't even start selling license. I think you have to buy a hundred VM license for Horizon View right from the beginning. So I don't even think it's possible to actually, you know, get less than that. I'll have to look into that, confirm that, don't hold me to that, but I think it starts at 100. Um, the other thing is, is with 3D graphics, you know, that, that's another reason to look into it. If you're going to go spend eight to $10,000 per person on a PC with really high-end, you know, PC parts, it starts to actually look more in favor to actually look at a VDI host for forty to fifty thousand dollars that you can fit eight or nine people on because you'll actually end up saving money in the end run. So that's where VDI kind of fits in. It does have its niches, but at the same time, it's not really cost effective for the smaller medium business. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody who's out there that's like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, set it up. They do a 60 day trial. It's fantastic. I'm, I love VDI. It's got so many capabilities. Problem is right now is those capabilities and everything, you know, th that price point is not really available yet for small businesses. So that, that's the only thing that I'm, that I'm worried about. Now, large scale businesses, if you're out there, you're watching this, I'm gonna let you know right now, there are so many possibilities with VDI. So continue to watch. I've got a large series coming up. We're gonna be going over how to set over the composers, the connection servers, the SQL databases, the vCenter, everything. And we'll also be setting up how to do 3D and not 3D pools in VDI over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the lab.